Hey everyone! In this video, I will cover all you need to understand and confidently use C-Frames in Roblox Studio. C-Frames are used commonly in Roblox game development to handle position and orientation locally or globally, like we see in these rotation examples. There will be two parts of this video, since we will cover the underlying logic behind the C-Frames, some fundamental information, how C-Frames are used in game development, and commonly used methods, which is a lot of content. Before beginning, please like, comment and subscribe to support the channel. Let's begin part 1. So C-Frame is the short form of coordinate frame. It is a data type that stores both the position and the orientation of a part. C-frame consists of 12 floating point numbers. The first three is the position, so in the three-dimensional world, it is the x, y, and z coordinates. And the rest corresponds to the rotation information of that specific part. Let's call them R00, 01, 02, 10, 11, 12, and 20, 21, 22. I'm going to talk about why we call these like this in a minute. But first, let me show you some examples of how to create C-frames in Roblox Studio. I have created a module script called Visualization. This creates a model that visualizes three axis handles and an origin, and if we pass in a C-frame, the model will be placed at that C-frame for visualization. We have an animated axis arrow method as well, which takes in two C-frames. It will animate the motion from the first C-frame to the second C-frame. So we are going to use these for visualization so that you can comprehend C-frames better. Now I am going to add a script here. I am going to change its name to test. I am going to put this pane here to be able to see the game simultaneously. The first thing is to add that module script. So local visualization is equal to require game.serverStorage.visualization. And let's start creating some C-frames. Local, let's call it initial C-frame. And the main constructor of C-frame is C-frame.new. There are different overloads of this. So there is this one with no parameter, this one with a vector 3 parameter, and so on. We will talk about these in a minute. Let's start with this one and let's print this C-frame. And also let's have visualization. So visualization.place axis arrows and I'll pass in the initial C-frame. When I run it, as you can see, it has created the axis handles. It is at the origin, and we can see that the position is 0, 0, 0, and the rotation values along the axes are 0, 0 and 0 degrees. If we take a look at the output, the first three are the positions, 0, 0, 0, but the rest is not full zeros. Although we didn't pass in any parameter, we can see a bunch of ones and the rest are zeros. So this is the default C-frame that is created when we write .new without any parameters. But we can use different constructors of C-frame as well. So instead of C-frame.new, let's go with the second option, Vector3.new. And here, I'm going to write the position for our new object. Let's use 1, 2, 3. When I stop and run again, this time you can see that it has been created at the position 1, 2, 3. We can also check the values here, 1, 2, 3 for the position. But the orientation didn't change. You can see that all the axis handles are parallel to their corresponding global axes. So this is another way of creating a C-frame by supplying position information. We can use another overload. Instead of writing vector 3, we can use three different numbers as arguments, which will produce the same result. If I run this, it has created the same C-frame for us. Let's see another overload. We have an option that includes quaternion. It is a data type that stores rotation information. Let's try this overload. We can pass in 1, 2, 3 for the position. And for the quaternion, we need to supply four numbers. The default quaternion is 0, 0, 0 and 1. If we run it, it creates the same C-frame for us at 1, 2, 3. In Roblox, we really rarely use the quaternion version, so let's skip that one and see the last overload here. In the last one, we should supply all the numbers. So from XYZ to R0001 up to R22, all the 12 numbers. We can supply all these, so 1, 2, 3, and the default rotation values 100, 010, 001. If we run this, it will create the same C-frame at the same place with the same orientation. So this is how we can create C-frames. It is quite straightforward. 
There are some properties of C-frame that are good to know. I will now demonstrate these for you. Let's copy this first and comment it out. I'm going to put it here, but I'm going to change all the numbers so we can distinguish them. So I'll go 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. We know that there are 12 numbers required for the C-frame. I have simple print lines with the properties. I'll paste them here. Let's comment these out as well to skip visualization for now. So let's go over these properties. We have cframe.position. It will give the position information. Rotation information will be given. There are six vectors defined. Right vector, up vector, look vector, and also x, y, and z vectors. And there's a method called getComponents, which will return the components to us. So let's see how it works. Here you can see that the position is 1, 2, 3 as expected because the first three numbers of the C-frame correspond to the position information. If we look at the rotation information, the rotation values are the same, but the position part in that is 0, 0, 0. It includes no position data as they are all 0 here, but all the right rotation values are stored in it. There is this right vector 4, 7, 10, up vector 5, 8, 11, and look vector negative 6, negative 9, and negative 12. And also x, y, and z vectors 4, 7, 10, 5, 8, 11, and 6, 9, 12. As you can see, the right vector and the x vector are the same. The up vector and the y vector are the same. And the look vector is the negative of the z vector. If we look at the output of the getComponents method, it actually returns all the 12 values of the C-frame. So what are these right, up and look vectors and what is their significance? If we rearrange this rotation information, we can create a 3x3 three three matrix. The first row is 0, 0, 0, 1 and 0, 2. The second row is 1, 0, 1, 1 and 1, 2. And the third row is 2, 0, 2, 1 and 2, 2. If we look at the columns, the first column 0, 0, 1, 0 and 2, 0 corresponds to the right vector, which is the x-axis that is shown with a red handle. The second one is the up vector 0, 1, 1, 1 and 2, 1. It corresponds to the y-axis shown with a green handle. The third column is 0, 2, 1, 2 and 2, 2. It corresponds to the negative look vector. If we go back to Roblox, we can see that the look vector corresponds to the front of the object. The front side here corresponds to the negative z. That's why it's negative. So the look vector is the negative of the z-axis. The third column here corresponds to the z-axis and it is denoted with a blue handle. So right, up and negative look corresponds to the x, y and z-axis visualized with red, green and blue handles. That's why these are called x-vector, y-vector and z-vector as well. Since these rotation values have some significance and they correspond to some important vectors in our game world, we cannot just pass in some numbers and expect it to work correctly every time. Let me show you with an example. I'm gonna copy this again. Keep 1, 2, 3. For the rotation, I'm gonna use 1, 1 and negative 1 and I'll zero out the rest. If we think about that, the right vector or the x vector will be 1, 0, 0, the up vector will be 1, 0, 0, and the negative look vector will be negative 1, 0, 0, which means that the positive z axis will be 1, 0, 0. So we have set all the three axes to 1, 0, 0 here, which is actually impossible to do. As you can see, or you can't, our C-frame visualization model hasn't been created here. Although there aren't any errors, we cannot see the model here. Let's check the workspace. You can see that there's an axis arrows created here, but we cannot see it at 1, 2, 3, although we gave the position information as 1, 2, 3. Let's press F while the axis arrows is highlighted to see where it is. It seems to be here in a dark place. Let's see what its position information is. Go to View, click Properties. As you can see, its position's y value is something like negative infinity. Things like this may happen if we just manipulate C-frame rotation values arbitrarily by hand. So what should we do? There are some methods that we can use to handle the rotation of C-frames. Now let's talk about these. If you remember, there was a constructor. Let me type it for you. Local initial C-frame is equal to C-frame.new. We skip this overload that includes a vector3 position and vector3 look at because there's a very similar one which is just more practical to use. It is called look at. 
Here, there are two required information. They are both of type vector tree. The first one corresponds to the position, so I'm going to copy the position values from here and paste. The next one is the look at parameter. And it means that whatever position we put in here, the front side of the object will look at that position. So basically, the object's negative z-axis will point at that position. Let's use 000 so that it looks at the origin of the game world. Let's run and see. The C-frame has been created here at 123. The position reads as 123. There are these numbers here which were calculated to rotate this model so that its negative z-axis points at the game world's origin. So we can see that the negative z-axis of the object, the negative of the blue handle, is looking at the game world's origin. So this is one way of creating or updating C-frames by passing in a look at position. But sometimes we may want to rotate a C-frame along its own axis. Rotation motion is very common in games and it's important to understand. Another method that is commonly used is C-frame.angles, like this. It asks for three numbers for X, Y and Z. They are represented as Rx, Ry and Rz because they are actually in radians, not in degrees. If you are not familiar with radians, let's take a look at this simple explanation. The degrees versus radians. Here we have our unit circle and we know the degrees are listed as 0, 90, 180 and 270. And when we do the full circle, it is 360 degrees. These are all in degrees. If we look at the corresponding values in radians, we can see that it starts from 0 and goes like pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2 and 2 pi. So this is basically the same thing, but the units are different. And if we look at here, 180 degrees corresponds to pi. We can take any of these couples and create an equation, but this one looks like the easiest. So the angle in radians is equal to pi over 180 in degrees. This is the formula, but we don't even need to use this formula. There's a method for this in Roblox Studio. It is called rad and it is defined under math. If we type math.rad, it will convert the value inside the parentheses, like 45, to radians. I typed 45 here. It corresponds to 45 degrees, but Lua will do the conversion for us. And this was for the x value. For y and z, let's keep them as zero. If I run the game, you can see that the model has been created at the origin, but it is rotated along the x-axis, the red axis handle. If I move the camera down a bit, you can see better that it is rotated along the x-axis. So cframe.angles creates rotations around the local axes of the parts. cframe.angles created the rotation for us, but here the position was 0, 0, 0. If we want to have both position and rotation values for the cframe that are other than 0, we need to combine these two. Let's do an example like that together. Comment this out and paste here. I'll change its name to 2. And I'm gonna copy and paste it here as well, and name as 1 this time. For initial cframe1, I'll use cframe.new123. So here you can see that initial cframe1 includes a position value, 123, and initial cframe2 includes a rotation value, 45 degrees along the x axis. To distinguish the differences between the two cframes better, I'll give these two different colors. For initial cframe1, let's use yellow. For initial cframe2, let's use purple. Let's run. As you can see, two models have been created. The first one is at 1, 2, 3 with no rotation, and the second one has rotation but no position, meaning that it is at the game world's origin. And we can see the information belonging to these C frames here. What I want is to combine these two C frames. So let's stop, come here, and create a local combination C frame. We learned that we could supply all the 12 values and create a new C frame, so I'm going to do that now new, I'm going to use the position information of the first one, copy and paste, dot x, dot y, and dot z. And I'm going to use the special vectors we have discussed for C frame 2. So initial C frame 2 dot right vector dot x, initial C frame 2 dot up vector dot x, and negative initial C frame 2 dot look vector dot x. These are all the x values. I'll copy these and paste twice. I'll change these values to y's and z's. We have now supplied all 12 values. And similarly, let's copy and paste these lines here and change the values. Maybe change the color as well. Let's use brown. Let's run. 
As you can see, we managed to combine the two C-frames. We have the initial C-frame here at 1, 2, 3 with no rotation and the initial C-frame 2 is at the origin with a 45 degrees rotation. The combined C-frame is at the same place as C-frame 1 but rotated by 45 degrees. And the values can be seen here. If we check the C-frames, they seem to be combined correctly. 1, 2, 3 is from the first C-frame and the rest of the values come from the second C-frame. So this is one way of combining C-frames. But as you probably noticed, it is too much work and there should be a better way of doing that. In part 2, I will walk you through how you can combine C-frames more practically and I'll cover some important C-frame methods that are commonly used in game development. Please like and subscribe to support the channel for more videos and turn on the notifications for part 2. If you want a new game development tutorial, you can always let me know in the comments. You can get access to the Roblox project file from Patreon, the link can be found in the description. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for part 2.